एवरीवन वेलकम टू पब्लिक स्पीकिंग लेवल टू नाउ यू माइट बी वंडरिंग वी हैव ऑलरेडी अंडर गॉन पब्लिक स्पीकिंग एंड इट वाज अ वास्ट कोर्स व्हाई अ लेवल टू इन योर लेवल वन व्हाट यू स्टडीड वाज हाउ टू स्पीक कॉन्फिडेंटली हाउ टू प्रिपेयर फॉर योर स्पीच हाउ टू थिंक थिंक थ्रू हाउ टू कम अप विथ आइडियाज मेन आइडियाज ड्राफ्ट योर स्पीच प्रैक्टिस इट एंड देन थिंक अबाउट द various communication skills so how should be your voice pitch your loudness so on and so forth we also studied how to uh, evaluate ourselves and how to look at other people's speech and learn from them self evaluation others evaluation so in entirety we have learned what is public speaking now this level 2 is designed for you so that you can start developing a speaker's mindset now what is a speaker's mindset a speaker's mindset makes you always be ready to speak on any occasion under any circumstances given any situation so that is what i'm trying to develop inside all of you that you need to develop a speaker's mindset now this level 2 has got again many lessons in this lesson we are going to focus on certain apprehensions that we have on communication okay as speakers what all apprehensions do we have and how do we overcome these apprehensions so shall we move forward Okay so the main topic is acquiring confidence so if you want to develop a speaker's mindset if you want to become a speaker who is always on the go ready to speak take up challenges to speak you will have to develop acquire confidence and develop that mindset now under acquiring confidence what we are going to learn now is what is communication apprehension now this apprehension at times might push you back okay and you would feel why am i taking this you know pain of talking again so let's just find out what are these uh, apprehensions the communication apprehensions and how can i overcome these apprehensions okay so let me just make you understand what is communication apprehension okay and then we will try to find out the different types and causes of communication apprehension then we will look forward to what kind of strategies we can use to mitigate this and manage our fears of apprehension fears and apprehension of public speaking okay though we have touched a portion of this in our level 1 but this is quite different from that because now you are a seasoned speaker you have developed a mindset of becoming a seasoned speaker then tactics you can use to deal with a variety of unexpected events so in the start i told you that you have to develop that mindset and be ready to talk anywhere that you get a chance to so what kind of tactics or variety of techniques you can use so that you can participate in any unexpected event and don't shy away you might encounter while speaking okay now let's look at each one of these one by one and what are you going to learn what are the objectives out of this lesson you're going to explain the nature of communication apprehension you'll be able to understand okay this is what communication apprehension is then psychological or physiological symptoms associated with and it's all about your mind so there'll be a lot of psychology and physiological uh, terminologies that i'll be using in this particular lesson identify different misconceptions which are associated with communication anxiety now you're you're listening to these words called apprehension anxiety i'll tell all of this to you now what is communication apprehension apprehension as a word means um, if there is a there is an uncertainty involved and you are not sure of certain things it makes you fearful okay it makes you anxious it makes you nervous so apprehension is when you are nervous fearful anxious related to something which you are not sure of which is uncertain okay so in simple words your fear or anxiety so there is a word called fear which we have already seen before and anxiety anxiety is whenever there is uncertainty you become anxious and there are some body reactions and then some reactions that happen inside you that makes you anxious okay so your fear and anxiousness associated with either real maybe there is something which is real something which you are foreseeing as can happen or will happen or anticipated now what is anticipated means something which you are thinking and not sure of with another person or person so individuals fear or anxiety associated with either real or anticipated communication with another person or people so whenever you have this anxiety 
uncertainty associated with what will happen, uh, what are the course of events that uh, which is going to happen, what is going to come uh, next to me, what are the surprises I'll be uh, seeing, or maybe you've already witnessed these things, but again these things are coming back to you. That's all about the apprehensions that you have. What will happen? What may happen? Okay. Now, can you read this word here? Fight or flight. Now, what does that mean? And I had told this to you when we were dealing with fears and phobias of public speaking. If at all there is a fear that you have inside you, some apprehension, some notion which can be true, which cannot be true. Okay, mostly it's not true. It's just in your mind. What should you do when you encounter um, an animal that you're really scared of? Let, let's say a tiger or a lion. What should you do? Should you fight or should you flight? Means should you run away? If you run away, it'll come and chase you. It'll keep coming and chasing you if you start running away. So the only alternative that is left to you is fight, uh, fight, sorry, this one, fight. So do not run away, fight, do not fly, or do not, it's not flight. And then the option is when you have decided to take that plunge, okay, take that jump, the only option left for you is to stand and talk or in certain situations, sit and talk. But Talking is important. So there is no running away or evading or escaping from talking. And you should never do that. All right. Now moving on. And these we had discussed earlier. I'm just trying to reiterate on the same things once again. What is this anxiety, nervousness, uh, apprehensions that we have? And how does our body react to it? It's always a reaction that happens inside our body. And it at times is inside and most of the time it's show, it shows outside. What, what happens? Your heart starts pounding. It starts beating very fast. It's it, as if, you know, heart will come out of the chest. It, it beats at times that fast. And these are the psychological or physiological, uh, not psychological, physiological. So there is a psychological uh, thing inside you which is physiological, which is not showing, okay? Heart pounding, hands feeling clammy, okay? Then you're sweating. People sweat a lot. Whenever you are nervous, you will sweat. You will sweat a lot. So you sweat. And this fluttering inside your stomach, as if there's something inside, you know, butterflies are running inside. These are all signs of, the physiological signs of anxiety, nervousness, fear. Shaky hands and legs. Automatically this happens. When you are not facing an audience, you are fine. There is no shaky hands, there is no shaky legs. You don't feel sweaty. But the moment you... Think, not even stand, but think that you have to speak in front of someone. These physiological symptoms start showing up. And this is something that happens, you know, you, you quench for thirst and then you are feeling thirsty. You, your throat uh, kind of gets dried up. Your mouth feels dry. Rapid breathing. Because the heart, the heart starts pounding, you've got this rapid breathing. <laughs> you breathe a lot, okay? And then dizzy. At times there are people who, who take these things. The, the body reacts so uh, weird because of these situations that you start feeling lightheaded. You start feeling dizzy. I mean as if you'll fall down. So these are some of the physiological symptoms of apprehension, communication apprehension. Okay, So public speaking apprehension. But in broader sense, it's communication apprehension. The moment you have to talk and it's not only about talking to a general crowd or public. Maybe when you have to appear for interviews, GDs, debates, anywhere, any situation that you have to talk, communicate, you feel these apprehensions. And these are the signs and symptoms. And it's normal, it's natural for you to have that. If you're having it, means that you are scared. But let's now look at how to deal with these kind of situations. Okay. Now, there are two components of anxiety, that anxiousness that you feel, that uh, restlessness that you feel. Primary reaction of the central nervous system. So as I told you, something happens inside your body and it's all here. Because it's here in your mind, in your central nervous system, your body reacts to it. Okay. So there are the, the primary reaction of the central nervous system that you have in your body and intellectual interpretation of these physiological responses. These are the two components of communication apprehension. How your body reacts to it and how you react to it. Okay, so central nervous system reacting to these anxiousness or anxiety, um, the, the kind of signs and uh, symbols that you have seen so far. And intellectual interpretation, how do you interpret of these physiological responses? So these are the two components of communication apprehension. How are you reacting? How is your body reacting? Now let's move ahead and see 
what all should we do so that we have to uh, fight with these uh, apprehensions that we have. Now, do effective speakers experience communication apprehension? Now, uh, I am trying to make you all seasoned speakers. I am trying to make you all build that mindset, okay? Speakers mindset, communicators mindset. Now, you must be thinking while you are listening to this video or watching this video that uh, this can only happen to me, but not seasoned speakers, people who have already spoken on various platforms or this is what they do. You know, they talk and talk and talk and communicate with people. They do not have these um, anxiousness and nervousness. Okay, so you have this question and all of us have this question that do effective speakers experience these apprehensions, these communication apprehensions that we have seen. Effective speakers do and mind my words, do have these apprehensions. None of us in this world is there who doesn't have these apprehensions, who doesn't have this fear of uncertainty and things around that. So, even seasoned speakers, take for example, President of the United States, the, the biggest country, the strongest country, even when he has to, he or she has to come and speak or uh, face the media or the, the public in large, they are also nervous. Anyone who is already into a lot of talking, communicating, uh, you know, giving interviews, sh sharing their ideas, views and all that, even for that matter, if you ask Mr. Um, all the big CEOs of big companies, okay, even they have this fear. I don't know how many of you all have watched uh, the episodes wherein uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of Facebook, or anyone from Microsoft, the senior management team, the VPs, AVPs for that matter, go and uh, face the, the Senates of US, United States of America. So they asked certain questions. Therein you will find these people actually looking for words. It happens. It happens and it's normal to happen. But how do these effective uh, communicators or people who are already into law of communication activities encounter these? Okay. So effective speakers have learned to channel their body's reactions. You have to learn that and by the end of this particular lesson, you should be able to learn these strategies, techniques, tactics, uh, tactics of you know, uh, telling your body, let these um, uh, psychological or physiological reactions not overpower you. You should tune your mind and make it such that whenever you have these fears, you can calm down. You can, I'll tell you the techniques that you have to use, but you first will have to prepare that mindset. Be ready to accept this, that I can counter or uh, fight my fears or communication apprehension in, in total that we are talking about. So what they do? How do they fight it? Effective speakers have learned to channel their body's reactions using the energy released by these physiological uh, reactions. So our body releases energy, we all know that. Anything that we eat, it gets converted into energy. And that is how we walk, we talk and we do se several activities. This does sound like I'm giving you a science lecture, but it's all associated with your mind and body, right? So when your body is uh, sending these signals, that you are nervous, you know, you've got shaky hands, um, dry mouth, so on and so forth. You as seasoned speakers and effective speakers do that. Seasoned speakers who are experienced speakers do that. They make their body tune, their mind rather. So it's all in the mind. The, the moment you tune your mind, your body reacts accordingly. So what they do is they use the energy. So when you, uh, these are, it could be positive energy, it could be negative energy. When you're feeling these shaky hands, shaky legs and dry mouth and all that, it's, re it's a reaction due to the, the uncertainty or apprehensions that you have. Now they're using this particular energy so that the, all the positive energy that they have, they are using it to fight the negative energies. Okay, so how do you actually inculcate or bringing these positive energies inside you is what we are going to see in the next few sections. So they are really they are using the energy release and this is very important here. Now you might be thinking that why are we talking about energy, body, physiological reactions and all that. Everything boils down to how you are actually tuning your mind and preparing for becoming seasoned speakers. So they, they use these energy released by these physiological reactions to create animation and this is important here. Create animation and stage presence. And I'll tell you there are certain techniques which we use. So when these, when they have these, everybody faces this, these apprehensions, they use it positively and they tune their mind and uh, they create an animation and stage presence. So automatically they will feel that okay, calm down, let my body calm down, let my mind calm down. Now they will visualize and animate that okay, we are standing already in front of uh, an audience or we are sitting in front of an audience, whatever may be the situation and we are talking. 
So they animate and they stage, they feel that stage presence. They can do that. So can you. And we are going to see how. Okay. Now, before we look at the techniques, let us just wipe off some of the myths that we have associated with com uh, communication apprehension. That is, in simple words, the fears and phobias and whatever uh, we have inside us. Okay. People who suffer from speaking anxiety are neurotic. Neurotic means people who have got some nerve disorder. No. Everybody can feel or suffer from speaking anxiety. Not only people who have, the, who have got these nervous disorders. People, you would say that, okay, he is born like that or maybe he is suffering from some nervous disorders, which is why he, is, he or she is suffering from speaking uh, apprehensions. But that's not true. It's a myth. It's false. And then uh, in my previous uh, lessons, I have told you that maybe at times telling a joke might help, but not always. So there is a caveat here. There is a caution here. Telling a joke or two is always a good way to begin a speech might not work always. Why? Let's say you've uttered a joke and then your audience has not been able to connect with the joke. Then what do you do? You fall flat on your face. So if you are trying to develop the speaker's mindset and try to, trying to fight out these uh, apprehensions, do not take the risk of starting your speech with a joke. So it's a caveat. It can work. It, sh it actually works, but not for everyone and not in every situation. So if you are thinking that every time I tell a joke, I'll be able to fight the fears, that doesn't happen. It might, you know, trigger some other reactions from audience, okay? So telling a joke or two is not always a good idea. Any mistake means that you have blown it. Now people feel that, let's say I have uh, committed a mistake, I have committed an error, means it's gone. I cannot take the opportunity back. I'll give an example of what happened to me just uh, two days ago. So I do these public speaking sessions, live sessions I do with a uh, number of children, some 50, 60, depending on whoever registers. So minimum audience size that I have is more than 50. So this uh, Monday was my, for this particular week, was my first session. And uh, somehow uh, Zoom, Zoom is the platform I use for uh, training children on uh, public speaking skills. All of a sudden Zoom was, and you can go and search while you are uh, listening to this video that, Google, you can go and search in Google that Zoom had literally stopped working across the globe, not only for India, everywhere it had stopped working. And it was just five minutes left for my session to begin. And this is the first session wherein I start building the connect with my children. And Zoom stopped working. I thought that what should I do? Should I cancel the session? I said, if I cancel the session, that doesn't look good. Again, I'll have to again uh, next day, you know, maybe the children are, uh, will not be available because I do alternate day session. Then I thought, let me just try out with my mobile phone. I started uh, using mobile phone. I'm used to using laptop and then connecting because you can see the whole screen and there are four or five uh, pages because you've got 40, 50 children who are um, attending. While doing that, obviously there were some technical hitches. And uh, I thought that at that moment also, while we had begun and started getting calls that, you know, we are unable to connect, we are unable to connect. So the same phone I'm receiving calls, the same phone I'm using for my Zoom sessions. So. I thought that maybe I've, it's gone. I'll not, I'll have to tell them, sorry, I'll not be able to continue with the session. But then I cooled down my mind and I said, what am I doing? Why am I doing that? I'm talking to the children, they're listening to me and they're connecting with me. I'm trying to connect with them. If I stop it here and if I say that because Zoom is not working, let's you know uh, postpone this session and do it next day, it will not have a good impact. And trust me, once the session got over and a few of the parents could not attend the session with their children, so I, t I gave them an option that I, since I do it every week, I will make you all join in the next week. They said, no, ma'am, we love the session. We would want to continue. So when you think that you have blown it, do not think you've actually blown it. You can continue. So one mistake is fine. Do not let your audience know or at times admit it, but continue. Do not stop it there. Avoid speaking anxiety by writing. Your, so we've told you that write and memorize, write and memorize. So what I'm saying here is always it doesn't work. Always it might not work, okay? So avoid speaking anxiety by writing your speech and memorizing it might not work always. Audiences are out to get you. And please trust me, we say that there could be disturbing audience, there could be audience who would try to judge you and all that. There are a pocket of such audience, not the entire population. They will never do that. They are there to listen to you, not to disturb you. So if you have this apprehension that audience is always there to get me, to uh, pounce at me, to bounce me and all that, you will not be able to speak out. So do, just, just erase these things from your memory, okay? These are all some of the myths that we have associated with com communication apprehension. This happens, that will, this will happen is what we tune our mind to. Now, 
types of communication apprehension and this is very important this will actually help you set course and move forward trait anxiety now um, trait anxiety is not nervous disorder trait anxiety is uh, there are people who have sometimes whenever they have to speak or uh, face someone not only speaking talking any uh, anything that they have to do they get this and they get anxious not only talking any situation they come across also they get anxious so it's a trait it's kind of um, some nature or behavioral uh, thing they are born with or maybe they have uh, acquired okay so it's a trait anxiety you can overcome this do not worry if you are facing with the situation of trait anxiety then there are people who have context anxiety context anxiety means um you are anxious only when there is a context so there are three parts of it formality uncertainty novelty now there are people who talk very naturally normally when they are uh, in a casual environment now when the environment changes and you just uh, imagine just think whenever you have to speak in front of your parents also yeah you speak on a normal basis talk every day but now your parents say that come on let's just uh, take us as an audience and start your speech you will fumble so when the moment the situation become uh, the circumstances become formal you have this apprehension so it's only associated with the formalness of the or, or the situation being formal or the environment being formal then uncertainty um example could be you do not know the audience size or you feel that um, maybe i'm not sure uh, what is going to happen so it's not in your trait okay and it's it's not you you are used to attending these formal sessions and talking but you do not know what will come next so that uncertainty that you have um, what is uh, it that is going to happen so that kind of anxiety comes under uncertainty trait okay and then novelty when these things come as new to you um maybe the the context changes and um, the entire thing becomes very new to you though you are associated with talking and all that but you feel that this is something new or i i can talk uh, in an, in a normal language but whenever the topic is new or uh, maybe the 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 venue is new so something new that comes maybe people are new venue is new location is new you feel anxious so novelty means something new so when whenever something new comes up you feel anxious then audience anxiety most of us have and we feel that audience i don't know what is the size of the audience is it small i can small in group uh, i can talk in smaller groups but in bigger groups i feel very anxious so depending on the audience your anxiousness level increases and then situational anxiety situational anxiety means whenever the situation changes um you can talk maybe um you can speak when a speech is memorized but you cannot speak imp impromptu situation changes you feel anxious even though you are a good speaker so these are some of the types of communication apprehension we feel now how do we reduce the apprehension so we are almost at the fag end of this particular section speech related considerations you have to take into consideration anticipation confrontation adaptation release so right before the speech starts you have certain apprehensions one minute before the speech uh, speech starts this the first minute of the speech starts you have certain apprehensions confrontation it's known as adaptation so you have to adapt to the till the last minute of the speech and release the minute the speech um, im the minute immediately following the end of the speech okay so anticipate what is going to happen then confront this is just your starting then adapt so now you are tuned and then release at the end of the speech okay so these are considerations that you need to take into um, account anticipate confront adapt and release so consider uh, just imagine and just think that okay this is going to happen let me admit it accept it confrontation you've just begun and then when you are when you are in the flow all the pounding and shaky hands and everything goes off and then you release so now you are you have ended your speech so these considerations you have to keep in mind and this i have already been telling you think positive the more you think i can do i will be able to do uh, i am meant to do so all good about you positive reaffirm uh, positive affirmations we call it the more confidence you get the more confident you become then now these are the um, how do you reduce speech anxiety using preparation 
preparation of your speech. This we have already seen, so I will not spend much time on this. But when you are thoroughly prepared, you have done your audience analysis, you have uh, written down your main ideas of the topics, then you have uh, come down to the uh, main topic, then you have done a research, and then now you are writing the talking points, main ideas of your speech, then you have come to the sub uh, ideas of the speech. So, all these processes, if you have followed, you will not um, feel apprehensions, you will not feel nervous. So, you have to practice and prepare. Okay? Practice in conditions similar. Uh, make your audience, I have told this to you earlier also, make your uh, parents your audience, your siblings your audience, your friends your audience. Keep that setting. If possible, go and visit the venue once, uh, stand on the stage and talk. So, when you do this, rehearsals we call it, you automatically gain confidence and you reduce the anxieties. Reducing uh, nervousness during delivery, anticipate the reactions of your body. So, maybe during delivery also, you are getting some signals from your body that uh, I am still nervous, I am still anxious. So, in order for you to calm you down and this you will not be doing while the speech is going on, before of course, deep breathing exercises you will have to do and you can go to Google and search how deep breathing exercises are done. Isometric exercises, so these are like push-ups and muscle building exercises if you do, even then you can control your anxiousness. And not only control anxiousness related to speaking or communicating any kind of anxiousness because you are tuning your body and mind. Okay? Focus on the audience and not, for, or not on yourself. Always try to get the cues, I have told you earlier also. Focus on them. Try to understand what they are, uh, whether they are accepting you, understanding you or not. So, focus on them rather than focusing on you and maintain your sense of humor. In earlier um, slides, I told you that not start with a joke, but maintain your sense of humor. Do not be someone who, who is like, okay, he or she had a very bad day and he has come to speak here or he is talking here. Give some fillers, some uh, humorous fillers if you use once or twice, that will help you build the connect, okay, with your audience and also reduce the anxiety. Now, the last technique that you are going to use is Positive and this is very important. I've told you uh, told you that seasoned speakers do this, experienced communicators do this. Positive visualization. Uh, do this exercise once the lesson gets over. Uh, imagine that you are standing in front of a crowd. Okay, close your eyes and think that okay, you are talking to an audience or you are communicating. Let's say you want to become uh, someone who would be interviewed. You are a celebrity. Just think, close your eyes and think that somebody is interviewing you and you are answering the questions or maybe you are preparing for some uh, advanced, um, you know, IPS, IAS, whatever course you want to prepare for and you are closing your eyes and you are giving the final interview. So, just visualize that you are talking, you are communicating, you are sharing your ideas, you are sharing your knowledge. The more you visualize, the more your brain gets tuned to understanding, okay, so this is what you want to become, this is what you want to grow up. And visualization, positive visualization of course, wherein everything is good, helps you not only in reducing your anxiety, but also giving signals to your mind that this is what I want in my life and you attract positivity in your life. And this is very important, systematic desensitization. There is, a, in psychology, there is a concept called classical conditioning. Classical conditioning means, uh, I'm, I'll give you an example, when you enter your room, without even thinking, you know where your switch is. So, you will automatically go and switch on. Okay? Now, let us say the room changes. Still, you will use your same, maybe right hand was your uh, switchboard in, you will use the right hand and try to switch on the buttons, then you realize, okay, this is a different room. That is classical conditioning. You become conditioned. You become accustomed to doing something. Now, if you are fearful of something or if you are apprehensive of certain things and you fly away, do not fight, but fly away, then you are not tuning your mind, you are not tuning your body to accept these challenges. So, what does systematic des desensitization mean? And this is a technique which is used for uh, many people who suffer from several kind of disorder, uh, uh, anxiety levels. They are given these situations that you are talking, okay? Accept it. Accept the challenge. Talk. Do not run away. So, every time you go and do this, some fear is gone. Then again you go and attempt it, again fear is gone. So, it is like you do not, uh, when you are a, when you become a pilot, you do not do it at once, okay, at one go. You do a several, you do several practices, then only you fly. So, go, come back, go, touch water, come back, touch waters, come back. When you start doing this, 
ultimately you will be able to fight your fears. So systematic des uh, desensitization is very important and you should do it. Try to uh, use it in your life for everything, not only for com communication apprehension, but for any new trait you want to learn or develop. So this was all about communication apprehension and how to uh, f face it and fight it back. So now you know that okay, these are the techniques I need to know or I need to use if I have to fight my apprehensions that is anxiety or nervousness associated with communication. In the next slides we are going to see what else we should do so that we can you know connect with your audience and become awesome awesome speakers and develop that speakers mindset. So I will see you on the other side. Thank you.